Hello, welcome to part B of the Monsters and AI uh, two-part section of the multi-episode um, uh, series that I've been making on a game called Realm 1, which is an open-source MMO-style game written in Rust using the Amethyst game engine. Um, so first of all, before I start, I want to do a big shout-out to MJOLNIR, MJOLNIR, um, Pull request in last week, super rad, so I'm just excited to, you know, I'm excited that other people are excited on <laughs> learning uh, Rust and game development and this uh, silly little adventure that I've been uh, learning about. Um, uh, yeah, so shout out to that. Uh, we have a Discord channel if you're interested in helping out or just lurking, uh, feel free to join that. Um, so, for this episode, I wanted to talk about how the AI system works. So, the AI system has been implemented um, recently, and when I say AI, this isn't like uh, AGI or, you know, machine learning, no, no, like nothing like, nothing like that. It's a very simple um, uh, gadget that, um, you know, causes... Uh, monsters in game to wander around and attack players and how that how the um the kind of architecture not architecture how the um how that how i wanted that to work is if the if the player is in some sort of radius of a monster the monster will chase if there is no player in a radius the monster will randomly wander around if a player is adjacent the monster will rotate towards the player, and if they're facing, then the monster will attack. So, okay, I'm not recording a screen. Boom, now I am. I always forget to do that. All right, so uh, maybe I'll give a quick demonstration of what that what that looks like in game. So this was this has been super slow for some reason. So I'm hoping that this will work. All right, looks to be working. So. I have some monsters, so you can see the bat over here is just randomly moving around every little bit. Um, this ghost, which I'm in radius of, is chasing me. Uh, and uh, once, once they're adjacent, the ghost will rotate. So you can see little eyes. Oh, you're on top of me. That's not supposed to be able to happen. So yeah, as I said, super simple AI, nothing, nothing very special going on right there. But I did, I do want to talk about how I made it. So the since this is like a an MMO style game, um, there's server client architecture, one server, several clients, uh, where a client is just a player, and uh, I'll talk about the entire pack of how a player hits a button and that updates the state, the location of that player on the rest of the rest of the clients. So uh, I have an, there's an input system, uh, which MJOL near uh, recently just totally revamped, super rad. Um, that uh, creates a command which gets sent to the player system, uh, which creates a pack which gets sent to the network system. So, for instance, say I hit W, it's going to do a walk north, gets sent to the player system, that generates a pack, which gets sent to the network system, that pack gets sent across the network to the server, then that generates a lifeform event, uh, which goes into the lifeform system. The lifeform system is going to validate and make sure that action is legal. Is the player allowed to walk north, or is there a wall there or something? If the action is legal, then a pack gets generated back. Uh, to the network system, and then that will get sent to all of the clients updating the state. So um, that's effectively how the um, how an input from a player works. Um, and how how does the what about what about an AI? So there isn't there isn't an um, you know obviously it's just a monster in the game. So we don't have this input system, we have something a little bit different. So on the server side, we have an AI system, which is going to generate a lifeform event. So that might be a move north, or attack, or a rotate, etc. something. And that's going to 
uh, propagate into the life form system exactly as it would have in the previous scenario uh, where that life form event came from a client. The life form event will update the state of the game. It will still check if it's legal, even though this shouldn't be generating illegal moves. Um, it will then generate a pack, and then that will update all the clients. Okay, so. So the this is the AI system right here. I've updated my uh, I've changed my terminal transparency. Oh, sorry, my foot fell asleep. Oh, so that everybody can see better. I got a couple comments on the last last video that people couldn't see, which is reasonable. Um, so basically, what's going to happen is I've set a timer. So every one every one second, I'm going to generate a huge vector of life form events. Well, not a well. The vector is proportional to the size. Every every monster gets its own life form event every second, basically. Um, so every second, there's going to be a huge vector that gets sent to the life form system, and that's going to update all the clients um, on the the state of the network and how those monsters have either moved, attacked, rotated, etc. So that's what this big one second loop is for. Um, that's subject to change in the future, um, and. In my game, uh, there's right now there's just kind of the one room, uh, but in the future there's going to be a whole bunch of rooms. So this for loop is basically saying for room in all of the rooms, do what's inside of it. Um, these two lines here, uh, this is generating a so for in each room generate a vector of players and generate a vector of monsters. So now we have one room and two vectors, one full of players, one full of monsters. And if uh, players is something, and if monsters is something, uh, then we're going to say uh, let events, let events, uh, which is again a vector of big events, uh, be uh, self dot uh, get all monster actions, which is a function up here, where the arguments are uh, self, uh, like the object, um, this vector of vector of monsters in this room, this vector of players in this room, and the life form list itself, which is the whole list of all the life forms in the game, and this is going to return a vector of life form events, which will then uh, propagate through to this life form system and update the state of the game. So this basically just creates an empty vector of life form events. And this here we're singulating again. So four monster in all of those monsters. So we're going to run this loop. So say there's like 30 monsters, it's going to run this loop uh, 30 times and it's going to uh, effectively uh, push events onto this event vector as well. I'm saying vector a lot. I really hope, oh crap, I should have. So a vector in Rust isn't like a vector in mathematics where it's like a magnitude and direction. A vector is like, a, it's like an array that's more capable. So you can, like, it's in C arrays are statically defined. So, you know, at compile time, they have a size. And if you want to like make them bigger or shorter, you kind of got to make a new arrays or you can use dynamic memory. So a vector is like, a, it's like an array that you can shrink and grow. It lives in a heap. Um, and, uh, you know, you can add, remove things to it. They're super flexible, super capable. Um, it's like a link, link list, um, if, if that means anything to people. Um, yeah, so, okay, so for monster in monsters, so it's going to loop through all of the monsters in this monster vector, um, then do this self.getMonster action, which is uh, another function up here. where this is going to, first argument is a monster, second argument is this vector of players again, and the third argument is this life form list. So now we've, we're going to do our final singulation where we're going to say four players, four player in players. So now we've, the first thing we've done is we've taken all of the maps and singulated one map. 
and then taken all the monsters and singulated one monster, and now taken all the players and singulated one player. Um, we're going to grab this player from the life form list, and if this player, so if this monster is, if this monster, this one singulated monster, is in range of this one singulated player, then it's like time to time to get this guy because it's you know in range. Um, uh, so if the player, so now we're saying we have some sort of <laughs> monster player radius. Player is inside of this radius. So that's that's just some so that's just some simple vector um, mathematics, and now I'm actually talking about oh, crap. Oh wow, you can trans. So now I'm actually talking about vectors and mathematics, where you have a like a an x y component, um, and basically just seeing if the distance between those two points. So if the player's in range, so first of all, if the if the monster's in front of the player, well then let's return a life form event attack melee. So if they're facing each other, the monster is just going to attack, and that's going to be the life form event for that monster. If they're adjacent, so say the player's here, monster's here, and you want to like rotate, then you're going to return rotate. And uh, if they're not adjacent, if they're not, if they're not, if they're not facing each other, and they're not adjacent, so they're some sixteen tiles away, um, then we're just going to do uh, return action move uh, direction towards. So that's another function which will basically just calculate uh, which which direction you need to go to move towards the player. Yeah, so all of that, so basically that will unspool for all, all rooms, all monsters in all rooms, and all the players in, in, in radius of those monsters. So that will generate a huge vector of life form events. And then once we unwind out of all those functions, uh, we're going to do for event in events. Then go ahead and uh, write all of those to the events channel, which will get read in by the lifeform system, update state, generate pack, and then send back the client. So maybe we can see that how that's happening again. Okay, so we got Mr. Ghost up here just like randomly wandering around. <laughs> Depending on how um, Why does it keep doing that? Anyways, I'm not having a good demo day today, but I hope that explanation um, made some sense. Uh, that is my, I'm at like 11 minutes, so that's pretty good. I want to keep these like under 15 minutes. Um, the next video I want to do is on items. So now that I kind of have, well, <laughs> playable, it crashes like every 10 seconds. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually fixing all the bugs so it stops crashing all the time. But um, the feature I want to implement after that is items and uh, things like that, and actually start integrating this into World. So we can then scale uh, several servers and synchronize all the assets across all the servers. So, yes, thanks for watching. Until um, next time, ciao.